So today we're going to talk about insecurities. Even though I've tried for so long to not be insecure, I still have so many insecurities. Whether that's physical or about my personality, I don't know. Like maybe we're just innate insecure beings. In today's episode, I'm just, it's going to just be like event sesh where a relatable I feel that too type of episode. I have no outline. I'm really just going to be pouring out my heart to you all and talking about what it's like to be a girl. So I think for intros, I want Not Your Typical does this segment, but like Not Your Typical Obsessions, like that sort of thing. And that's where it gave me the idea because I don't really like the word highs and lows or bud and thorn or sweet and suck, like whatever those ones are, like likes and dislikes. Also, I'm so excited to move down to Orange County and have a room with a desk because like a desk in front of a window just sounds so nice. I feel like everything in life will just be better when I move back to the coast. Actually, I'm on the coast, but SoCal coast, not Central Coast. So my, let's start with dislikes. And I see a drastic change when I don't do it. Recently, I've been going on my phone and scrolling on TikTok for like an hour or two and I just feel awful like it makes me not like myself it makes me get in this like downward spiral of negativity and I'm not getting quality sleep and I know it I just like keep self-sabotaging self-sabotaging and doing it like why am I doing that I don't know it's addicting and I'm it's like I'm looking for something to make me feel bad because I know at night my TikTok algorithm just knows I'm sad Also, everything at night is just exemplified. Like if I just went to bed at nine o'clock, then my I know my thoughts won't go to dark places. So why do I keep why do I keep going to bed late? And why do I keep going on my phone looking for something to make me sad? And then I spiral. So I just need to not do that. That's my dislike of the week. And then my like of the week is I saw my old therapist yesterday. She is just such a sweet, kind soul. I just, right when she opened the door to let me in or like came to go get me in the waiting room, she wanted to give me a hug. She was so excited to see me and it just made me feel so loved that she actually appreciates me and wants to see that I'm doing well. So I feel like that was just such a heartwarming moment to be with her again and give her a little update from the past. I don't don't know if I've seen her for three months or something. I know I think it's been three months because she kept having to cancel for something. So that was so nice and very validating. And I, since like taking psychology classes, I've learned in class like reflective speaking and how you're supposed to respond to someone when they're opening up to you. So it's kind of ruined therapy for me in a moment and psychology in general. Now that I know what reflective like mirroring conversation is, Every time I went to this new therapist, it seems like you're sad. Like, she just kept... I felt like she was taking the easy route out. Like, I'm in college learning about this type of therapy, psychology type of class thing. I feel like if you're in your deep career, you should have more skilled tool set. Like, your patient shouldn't know how you're trying to get information out of them. Yeah, I guess I just wanted more from my current therapy sessions and... It was really nice going back to my old therapist because she knows me so well. I feel not confident, but I felt accepted and I didn't feel judged. And that's how therapy should be. So I'm going to see her again until the mid-June. And then she's going to help me find another therapist that my insurance covers for the rest of my life. Not for the rest of my life, just until my transitions in life stop which I don't think they ever will but whatever (laughs) it's besides the point but let me tell you about Costa Rica my gosh that was such an enjoyable trip I went with my parents my little brother we never we haven't gone on vacation since I was like in middle school with the whole family and this was also the first time my parents had the funds to do tourist activities so we've never been the family that goes ziplining or goes on a boat tour or does all this types of things we really just go to a location and we stay there and it's always been fun it's always still a family vacation but I never knew that families do these activities when they go and travel 
go to these cool places. So we got to Costa Rica and the fruit there is actually insane. It's so fresh. It's also so cheap because we ate breakfast at the hotels mostly because it was included and there wasn't very many options for me. So I just had a fruit a lot on the trip and mostly tropical fruit. So they don't really have berries and stuff. They have like papaya and this weird fruit that was all white and it was so so sweet so bomb i would say like the most authentic food like we went on a this like boat tour and they provided like an authentic costa rican meal and it was so amazing and we also did river rafting which was my highlight of the trip we saw monkeys and we got to jump in the river we jumped off a cliff they gave us fresh pineapple and our tour guide was so fun he let my little brother like sit on the the edge of the river rafting boat and he's just an adrenaline adrenaline junkie anyway so that was fun for him i've never been river rafting he also let us spin around and jump off it was so fun and then we also got like an authentic costa rican meal there too it was two dollars and fifty cents like what it was actually bomb he also thought it was 15 years old the tour guide which is wild to me because i swear i do not look 15 (laughs) Okay, we also went ATVing. I'd recommend doing it in the forest or like on a beach. We did it in the dirt road, so that was kind of a bummy, but still cool. I've never been ATVing. We went surfing twice. One Costa Rican guy got so upset at me because I took off on the same wave as him, which yes, I've surfed. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I genuinely didn't see him. And it's not like I fell in front of him. I rode the wave. I wasn't in his way. I mean, I was in his wave. But, like, he could just caught another wave. That was my first wave of, like, two hours. Got massages. It was supposed to be a lymphatic drainage massage. I don't really think it was, but it was still super nice. The whole trip, it wasn't rainbows and butterflies. Not, not saying that. I think there were so many perks of it, and I'm so glad I went. Like, I'm genuinely so happy that I went on this trip with them. I got a bond with my little brother and my parents. So, I definitely wouldn't take it back. I really want to keep traveling. I hate flying, though but I love traveling. So I definitely am going to look into other trips in the future. However, I did book my trip to Florida tomorrow yesterday and I'm so excited because I'm going for my 21st birthday and to visit Max. I mean, I'm going to visit Max and just happens to fall on my birthday. That's going to be so exciting. I'm going for exactly a week, which I was only supposed to go for five, but it's so expensive to travel Memorial Week. Now let's get into today's episode because I did my likes, I did my dislikes, and I did my recap for y'all. Insecurities. When did I first know about my insecurities? Hmm. I would say when I got to middle school is when I started to have insecurities. I think it was because there were boys in middle school and that's when people like started dating and getting your first kiss and I cared what the boys thought of me and so did all the other girls. I was always the buff girl. I had eight, I had an eight pack. I was very tiny also. Like I looked like three years younger than everybody and I was a gymnast. So I had a lot of muscles and like no body fat and I hadn't gone through puberty yet in like eighth grade when all the boys would start telling me that I was flat that I had no boobs I had no butt and I didn't look like the other girls who had hips and went through puberty obviously I got very insecure and I just I wanted boobs so bad (laughs) and I would put oranges in my bra or not my bra but I'd put oranges in like the dress and like run around the backyard because I really wanted boobs I also started to not like my abs because I was I had better abs than the boys and I just wanted a flat stomach. I just wanted my abs to go away and for me to get boobs and a butt. That's all I wanted. And I didn't realize it was because I didn't go through puberty yet. I thought there was something wrong with what I looked like. The boys, like I wanted the attention from the guys in my class, not necessarily for them to like me, but I didn't want them making fun of me. I was called Flat Stanley in middle school and I just didn't want to be known as that. I would say that's where the insecurity of what I looked like started. Then let's go to high school. Facetune came out and unfortunately I went through a Facetune phase where when it came out I just Facetuned the crap out of myself. I remember posting for my birthday. This is so embarrassing. I took the photo off Instagram but I literally don't look like myself. I distorted my nose, I distorted my eyes, I whitened the heck out of my face, used like the glow tool, 
it just basically wasn't me. And when Facetoon came out, I Facetoomed every single one of my photos because this is how I justified it in my mind. I was like, oh, cameras like add 10 pounds to you anyways, or I'm just elongating myself. It really messed me up. So basically, fast forward a couple months, couple years, I look back at photos and I deleted every single photo except the ones that were edited because I wanted to believe that's what I actually looked like. And then I forgot that I edited them. So I would go back to these photos and be like, oh my gosh, I used to be so tall or so thin or my nose looked so much slimmer. But in reality, that's not what I actually looked like. I edited those photos. And people always talk about how you look at photos. And yes, those photos on social media most likely are not real. But also my own freaking photos aren't real. Like I can't even go to my own camera roll and find photos of me from freshman year that aren't edited. And that's just so sad that I thought I had to edit photos of myself and to post online to feel good enough and that's been my word for so long is enough because I've never felt enough to this day and that's sad and I'm I'm trying to change it I've been trying to change it I don't know where it's come from the feeling of never being enough but I'm sure it goes deep down into my childhood and there's so much I can impact there I really want to do EMDR one of the like one of my friends that I've hung out with recently, she's doing it and I think it's so cool. And my sister's done it for her car accident. I definitely want to see if like anything comes up that I don't remember. So basically, okay, when I remember like freshman, sophomore year, I had a friend who also really did not like what she looked like. She wouldn't leave her room without putting makeup on. Her parents never saw her without makeup. And this girl is beautiful. She, it's not like she had like acne or like she was trying to cover up something else like she honestly had the nicest skin I've ever seen but she just did not like herself without makeup I didn't realize that until we would me and my friend would sleep over her house and when we would wake up she would already have makeup on like she literally would not let anyone see her without makeup on she also really wanted plastic surgery because when we look on social media everyone has plastic surgery so she wanted her ears done she wanted her chin done her lips her I think her body in that time of my life I'm hanging out with this person who really wants to change a lot about themselves I personally was insecure about my nose insecure about not having a butt or boobs and those were I would say my like top three things that I didn't like about myself so I instead of saving for like a house or a car I was saving to get plastic surgery at 15 years old that's so sad in my journals probably I could find it how much it costs to get a boob job, to get a butt lift, to get a nose job. And I was intentionally saving for that every time I made money. I didn't do any of that. I don't have any of that. No 15-year-old should be wanting plastic surgery at that young of an age to fit any societal standard. So I'm coming back to editing, I mean, to recording this episode halfway through the weekend. Wanted to include again. Back in middle school, Not only was I really trying to fit this body mold that would get me the attention from my peers, but that doesn't work because I'm pre-puberty, a 13-year-old to a woman. I don't think I was ever properly introduced to those topics as a kid, and I really wish I was because maybe it would have at least prolonged these body image issues and I think a lot of women deal with their body and it changing whether it's from childhood to adulthood or your 20s to your 30s or your 30s to your 40s or pre and post having a child your body is ever changing we're taught that it has to stay the same We we look at social media we see before and after pictures like I'm I'm guilty of posting those too whether it's weight gain or weight loss and even if it's not about women's bodies we see on social media of celebrities who they're 20 years from now and they look the exact same people showing that they haven't aged in 20 years personally when i see that i think oh i shouldn't age aging is bad society doesn't accept women who age it just perpetuates this idea that women have to stay the same in this box that is considered perfect that is considered beautiful and i also think that every woman has a different idea of beauty and every person has a different idea different idea of beauty and i think that everyone should be beautiful in their own way i think it 
might have to do with like who you surround yourself with, what you watch on TV, what your family talks about. But my idea of beauty was either, okay, I had two ideas of beauty when it comes to looks. One was pale skin and dark brown hair. I remember standing in gymnastics practice and my friend Haley would was tumbling in front of me and I was like, wow, I wish I had her color skin and my dark hair. She's just so beautiful with that complexion. And I really, really hated my tan skin. And I was always extremely tan as a kid. And I this is one of my insecurities that I think is interesting for me to look back on. One of that was one of my beauty standards was I had to have light skin. For a good year or two in high school, I did not I used to go to the beach every single day and I did not go to the beach once that summer, or at least tan. I have I still have this idea in my head where I don't like to be in the sun mostly because of like sun damage, but also because I still don't like getting super tan. It's just this really deep down insecurity of mine. If if I'm tan, I'm not beautiful or people won't like me. And it goes down many layers of, I don't know why I didn't think being tan was beautiful. And it's crazy because so many people use self-tanner and want to be tan. And I was always complimented of my naturally olive skin that I didn't have to go in the sun to have this natural tan. If I did go in the sun, I would get a lot, lot darker. My skin was just so pigmented. I also was never recognized as my own ethnicity. I think that's the right word. And that really messed with me as a kid. I was always called exotic or people would ask me if I'm from this country or that country, like my family origins. I don't know why that bothered me so much, but I just wanted to be known or recognized as where my grandparents were from. Not like from, but like my grandma was Japanese and my mom was from Canada. So I just want people to look at me and be like, oh, she's Japanese or she's Canadian. That was never what people first thought. And I didn't like that guessing game of, oh, where are you from? There, There is an insecurity for that. But then my other beauty standard was being in California, blonde, light skin, colored eyes. And when I think about it, I can never be either of these. That's just not, I'm brunette, I have brown eyes, and I have tan skin. And I always just wanted to be something I wasn't. And I had friends who looked like what I wanted to look like. When, okay, so boys used to rate girls. Just so gross. But they used to rate girls from like 1 to 10. And I noticed that if a girl was blonde with blue eyes and thin, she would automatically, and be able to dress well, She'd automatically be scored eight, nine, whatever, high score to these boys. But if it was a brunette with brown eyes and tan, or I mean like thin or dressed well or something, she still wouldn't get that high, even if she was beautiful. I I understood that as if I was just blonde with blue eyes, more people would like me because they're just automatically more beautiful than I am. And I don't think that I fully understood that for a really long time. I just, that's a really sad truth to live at such a young age. And all these insecurities I'm sharing with you, some I've moved past and some I still challenge myself with constantly, this feeling of being enough. And I don't think you can get past these just by a snap of a finger and someone telling me you're beautiful or a boy liking me or having a long-term relationship. I think it goes a lot further than that into having a self-love journey and accepting of who I am and I can't change a lot of things I am. I can make myself more smart. I can love people more. I can continue on this personal development journey, but I can't change the color of my hair. I mean, I could dye it, but it would look terrible. (laughs) I mean, that also goes into the thing of so many women dye their hair or wear a bunch of makeup or get all these surgeries just to live up to the standard. And yes, miss, yes, you can do it for yourself. Let's say that I got a nose job. Maybe I will one day. But if I really think about where the root of why I wanted a nose job, it would have not been because I thought I wanted it for me. It probably would have been because I was told at one point that I have a big nose or that thin noses are more on trend or more societally accepted. So the root cause of me getting a nose job was more to fit in versus do something for myself. And I think there there is the difference. So if I were to dye my hair blonde, it wouldn't be because I just want to and I think I'll look good and 
my now experiment, it'd be because my younger self didn't think I'd be pretty unless I was. So moving in to high school again, I struggled with what I looked like. I was still in track. I was still in And I don't think doing sports where you had to be thin was the most beneficial. I love these sports. I've had like traumatizing experiences when it came to gymnastics or ballet or track. I didn't necessarily like in those sports with the relationship with my coaches and stuff. You had to be light to do certain skills. And once you hit puberty, you're done. You don't have very much longer in like a sport like gymnastics. And I knew that consciously. And I knew that my time in this sport had a time clock. It's not like it was golf where I can golf until my 80s and teach my children. I could only do gymnastics until my body eventually gave up on me, which it did. I'm in track. I'm post-gymnastics. Boobs. It was great and all. I loved it. I finally always got it. But then it got too much. And then instead of wanting a boob job, I started wanting a boob reduction. It really did affect me like my back and stuff and like the clothes I wore and I didn't like how I always had to cover myself and it also went into the idea that I had to be thin and I was no longer thin thin to the standards I wanted so I thought that if I got a boob reduction then I would look thinner in sweatshirts and shirts in general because then I was carrying so much weight in my upper half of my body which has never happened before hence the growing up I did not like how I looked all of high school. I struggled so much with my body image and always on the cycle of trying to lose weight and never reaching what I wanted no matter how little I ate, no matter how much I worked out. My body just wouldn't do it. And I think a lot had to do with birth control or stress or maybe that was just my where my body wanted to sit at, but I couldn't accept it. And moving into relationships, like the relationship I am in, time my insecurity was I need to be chill I think this was what most like guy friendships relationships is I thought I needed to dumb down my personality to get this guy to like me and not being reactive seeming cool seeming chill like I wanted that reputation so odd to me because if someone real if you really want a friend or anyone to like you you should only you should be your authentic self they like you then they're supposed to be in your life if you're putting on this fake personality they don't actually like the real you and when the real you does come out they might say bye you might be confused if you if you put your full self out there then you give them the first opportunity you meet them to decide whether or not they want to be going through life with you friend or relationship I think that part of me is really interesting because maybe it was this desire to be accepted and I would do anything to be accepted and I think I could have went down a much more difficult path in the sense of trying to please and be accepted by people. Thankfully, I didn't go through that path, but I understand why people do, why they get into drugs and alcohol, why they get into the partying crowd, and or they're throwing themselves at men. I get it. I get wanting to be accepted, never feeling fulfilled or like people know you. Another insecurity I have is mental health. This goes more towards my relationship of being like, I need to be happy. I need to put on this face that I'm always happy and that things are good and I need to be positive. I'm having a difficult time separating having a positive mindset and being a happy person, but also letting myself feel my feelings and not bottle it all in. Because in high school, I bottled it all and I didn't ever cry. I was known as unemotional and to a certain point, I cried every single day. So obviously, I know that keeping your emotions in aren't good, but I also don't want to be a Debbie Downer and always be complaining, always calling my friends, telling them when something's wrong or my boyfriend, because that's not fun either. I gotta, at some point, I need to figure some things out on my own, but I guess I don't want how I feel inside, whether it's good or bad, to affect the people around me and make them not like me in a sense. I'm not sure if anyone has a else has felt that but I'm not really quite sure. So I guess some things I still really am insecure about is my personality, whether it's people liking me, being too much, still not being thin enough or beautiful enough or smart enough. Those are all things that come with self-confidence and self-worth and 
I'm doing this self-care journal all about self-love and I think it's really helpful and I read books and I listen to podcasts all about this sort of stuff. So it's not like I'm just sitting in this insecure mindset 24-7. I'm doing some things to make myself feel better, but I also don't think it just will go away because from the time I remember, I've had some sort of insecurity and I don't know where that really stems from, but I can't just expect myself to snap out of it. I'm human. I have to feel these feelings and I need to give myself a bit more compassion and love and acceptance and understanding that life isn't easy. And also give doing those positive affirmations. I'm really, really not the best at doing it every day, but I really try to. I have the app called I Am and I paid for the subscription so I could personalize it a little more. I get like 10 notifications a day. So let's read one right now. Also, my background on my phone is called love yourself. Just a quick reminder every day for myself. So my affirmation is I allow myself space to breathe. And then the other one, because I have three on my phone, I am grateful for the people in my life that make me happy. And the next one is I choose exercise habits that help me feel better about myself. I don't always read these and I don't always sit in front of the mirror and tell myself all the things I find beautiful about myself. Having that idea, knowing that I could do those, are better than nothing. Show myself a little bit more appreciation. And I think all the self-care things I do for myself make me feel better and make me feel loved and remind myself of why I'm special, why... So I think it comes down to surrounding yourself with people who don't expect much in the sense of don't expect you to be more beautiful, don't expect you... I have, I'm also insecure about my skin. I haven't always, I've had really nice skin at one point, but I've always, I had acne in high school and then right now I just, I get like flare-ups. But besides that, I'm also insecure that like all my hair is falling out, but I've talked about that so much and I'm on the process of getting it back. Let me just say is who you surround yourself is who you become. So if you surround yourself with very insecure people, you're going to be insecure. And I'm not like, yes, everybody has their insecurities, But if you're getting ready for a party, you're sitting on your friend's bed doing your makeup and she looks in the mirror, like figuring out what she wants to wear. She's telling herself, oh my God, I look so fat. This shirt looks terrible on me. I wish I was skinnier. How do you lose weight? Da, 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 da. One, that makes you feel like crap about yourself. Two, you don't, you don't think that about your friend. You want to help your friend be happy, love themselves as well. I I feel those things about myself, but I really try not to say them out loud around other people because that just brings down the whole mood and I understand feeling like that. I don't know. It's kind of like hard to like distinguish like what to do with that, but basically what I'm trying to say is if all your friends are insecure, you're most likely going to be insecure and it's more of like speaking it out into existence. It's the difference of having insecurities and not trying to make them better or saying just putting yourself down every single day, watching your friends put themselves down every single day versus people who are on their self-love journey slowly doing the little things to make them feel better and love themselves a little bit more, surrounding yourselves with those types of people. And I'm not saying get rid of those friends who are insecure about themselves, but add in more time with the people that make you feel better. Don't make you look at yourself and wonder what's wrong with you. Don't surround yourself with people who make you feel like you need to wear makeup or feel like you have to go to the gym to fit in or have to eat this to fit in with them or you need to laugh less, be more quiet, not talk as much. The people who make you feel bad about yourself, spend less time with them. (laughs) You don't just need to stop being friends with them, but don't hang out as much. Hang out with the people who embrace your laughter, embrace your personality and your wanting to be friends with them in any way that is. And I think that's a really hard conversation because it's hard to navigate when someone's draining you versus when somebody is projecting their feelings and emotions on you. And this episode was a bit less on tips and tricks, but more on relatability and knowing that how you feel, you're most likely not alone. Someone else has most likely felt that way and really made themselves cry that night. And I've cried myself to sleep so many nights about a lot of these things, or it's held me back from trying new things or thinking I'm good enough to get that job, be that friend, be that girlfriend, and do X amount of things. So I just want you to know that there are people who feel the same way as you and you're not alone and yeah, most people don't talk about all the things they're insecure about because 
One, I do want to put happy, go lucky stuff on social media so you can come do it and feel better about your day. But then at the same time, if you go to someone's page and all they talk about is the good things and how their life is perfect, then sometimes it can make you feel bad too because you're like, why isn't my life like that? Why can't I have that? What's wrong with me? Realness in the world of creation and to curated life that we put out. My Instagram sometimes is just a highlight reel of my not real life. So know that your favorite Instagram person, maybe it's your that you're not super close with, but it just looks like they have everything put together. Their hair is done, their makeup's done, their outfits are already done. They have their parents are still together. They're super close with their parents and their siblings and they go on vacation every day or every year and they have a lot of money. Maybe you look at that girl and you're just like, wow, that girl has it all together. But maybe she doesn't. Maybe she does all these things. Maybe her parents are fighting. She's too scared to tell people because she has this curated life on Instagram. And even maybe in real life, she doesn't want people to know that maybe she's not doing well. So I think it's really easy to assume, kind of create this fake scenario in your head of other people or whatever it is. So sometimes we just need a reality check that most people are more alike than we realize. That's okay. It's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to be okay. So... I hope you have a great week. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok. My Instagram's my perspective pod. TikTok is Shell Bright. Follow me on the socials to keep up. And I hope you have a great week. I hope you work on your insecurity in some little way, whether it's painting your nails, going on a walk, telling a friend, and just accepting that maybe you can't change what you don't like about yourself, but you can change the way you see it. I love you all so, so much, and I'll talk to you next week.